Hello class and welcome to your your maths lessons for this week. As you can see, we are continuing this week with fractions and decimals. Here's a quick glimpse into what we are working with this week. We have three lessons uh, of new learning. Then we have one lesson to do some revision of some of our key bits of knowledge from the unit. And then we will have uh, our little assessment at the end of the week. So our first lesson will be about ordering decimals, but first, I'm hoping you know the drill by now, can you please pause the video and complete these arithmetic questions uh, on the Google Doc, which is saved week beginning 18th of Jan, maths, arithmetic. You can pause now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I hope you all got on with that well. As this is the first week of, um, the, sorry, the first day of doing the arithmetic this week, I will give you a little bit of help with the sort of ways that I would be expecting you to answer these questions. So, for example, 23 multiplied by 3, we are either going to do that in our head, by doing 20 times 3, add 3 times 3, or we might want to set it out as a column, like that. Uh, the second question is place value subtraction. So what we need to do is identify this number is in the hundreds column and take it from that number, it's in the hundreds column. So you probably don't need to write this out as a column method. All you need to do is identify those digits which are in the hundreds column and then do five subtract two. Uh, for the last one, we've done lots of rounding this year. We will continue to do lots of rounding this year. Uh, rounding this number to the nearest 10. Well, of course, I know that my answer is going to be a multiple of 10. So it's going to have one zero at the end. It's going to have a zero in the ones column. And I need to identify the number that's in the ones column. And then, of course, I need to say this number. Do I need to round that up? to 12,350 or down to 12,340. Okay, moving on. We are going to do a little bit of skip counting. Now, as you can see, I have a number line. The number line is equal to three. It starts at zero and ends at three. Now, at the bottom here, I have my whole integers. They are integers of 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We're all familiar with those. Now, each of these has been divided into four equal parts, as we can see. Like that. Now, what is 1 divided into four equal parts equal to? Well, each of them is equal to a quarter. So, you can see that each time I make one of these steps, I am adding on a quarter. So, 1 quarter two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters, seven quarters, eight quarters. Now let's stop here and have a look at eight quarters. What do you notice about the numerator and denominator of eight quarters? Well, well done if you are able to identify that the numerator eight is twice as big as the denominator it is two times that and you can see that four quarters there was equal to one and when the denominator is twice as big as the numerator it is equal to two so let's carry on nine quarters ten quarters eleven quarters twelve quarters what do you notice about the relationship now between the numerator and the denominator well, well done if you were able to identify that the numerator this time is three times the denominator, four multiplied by three is equal to 12. So when the numerator is three times the denominator, that is equal to three. Some fraction and decimal equivalents now. It is going to be really, really useful for us 
throughout our math journey and using maths in real life, if we start to remember some of these rather than having to work them out. Some of the most common fraction decimal equivalents that we are going to come across are these ones here. Those three there. Zero to zero point five to one. I'm doing steps of a half that time. And then I can see here my steps of one quarter. One quarter being equal to zero point two five and three quarters being equal to zero point seven five. It is we are going to look in those, look at those in some more detail over the course of this week, but it will be really useful for you if you start to think about those and remembering those equivalences. That one quarter is equal to zero point two five, a half is equal to zero point five and three quarters is equal to 0 0.75. Pause now, of course, if you would like to have a look at some of that key vocabulary. And if you are working with someone, have a discussion about any that you are not sure you uh, might need some help with the definitions of. OK, so in this lesson, what we are going to be doing is comparing decimal numbers. Now, firstly, let's take these five digits that we have here, one, zero, three, two, and five, and arrange them in any order in order to create a decimal number. So in any order, we can put them into this place value chart that we have at the bottom. So let's just put them in the order that they appear in. So one, zero, three, five, two. Now, how would we say that number out loud? We've got one ten, we've got no ones, we've got three tenths, we've got five hundredths, and we've got two thousandths. What is that as a number? What number have I written there? Well, well done. If you were able to identify that the number is 10.352. It is not 10.352. It is not 10.352. We say our anything this side of the decimal point we are familiar with. We know the number 10. 110 and no ones. We know that number is 10. Anything after the decimal place, we just say the digits from left to right. We say 10.352. Again, we do not say. 10.352. The same way, if we ignore this for a second, we would not say 10.35, we would say 10.5. That's going to help us when we are ordering and comparing these decimal numbers. Now, I've put a couple of questions on there if you want, if you are working with someone, you could pause the video at this point to discuss. What do you think is the largest number we can make using these five digits in those five place value columns? Well, well done if you were able to identify that. The thing we need to do is just start with the largest one and work our way down. So five tens, of course, is much, much greater than five thousandths, isn't it? If you think if you had uh, a pizza, would you rather have five lots of 10 pizzas or would you rather have five one thousandths of a pizza? One pizza divided up into a thousand equal parts and then just five of those given to you. So obviously uh, the first one is much, much greater. So the five we want to use in our tens column. So what would be next? Well, well done if you were able to identify that it is three. And then it would be the two, then the one, and then the zero. Now, what number have I got there? Well, well done. If you said 53.210. Now, I don't actually need to write this zero in there. If my last number is a zero, 
uh, I can just get rid of it because I 53.21 is the same as 53.210. This zero here has no value whatsoever. Okay, here we have two numbers and they are represented underneath by number counters. Now, uh, some of them have been filled in for us and some of them we are going to have to have a think about ourselves. Okay, so what two numbers do we have? Well, we have 15.023 and we have 15.23. Now, I want to work out which one of these has the greater value, which is the bigger number. So have a little think to yourself first before we move on. Which of those do you think is bigger, the top one or the bottom one? Well, some of you might have said that you thought the top one was the bigger because it's got more digits. And we are used to, for example, the number... 23,412 is a bigger number than 6,211. It's got more digits in it. So we might have immediately said, oh, I think that this one here is the bigger one. But unfortunately, when we're dealing with decimal numbers, it's not that simple. What we have to do is line the numbers up, just like we have here. So all the tens are in the same column, all the ones are in the same column, all the tenths are in the same column, the hundredths and the thousandths, and what we have to do is we have to start reading from left to right. Now, if this number in the tens column, if one of them is bigger than the other, then the one with the bigger number is the biggest number overall. So let's start. Okay, so we have a one here and a one here. Can I tell so far which is the bigger number? I can't, obviously, because one is equal to one. Neither of those numbers is greater than the other. So I need to move on to the next column and do the same thing. So I have a five in my ones column here and a five in my ones column here. Can I tell yet which is the bigger number? Well, of course I can't because five and five, they're the same number, they're equal to each other. So I have 15 and 15 in both of my rows so far. So I'm going to have to do what? Go to the next column. Now, this time I have zero tenths in this column, and I have two tenths in this column. Which is bigger, zero tenths or two tenths? Well, of course, two is bigger. Two tenths has more than no tenths, because you have two of them as opposed to having none of them. So, what we can do now really is discount, we can ignore all of the rest of this stuff because there is no number that could be here which will make this smaller. So as soon as I've identified a number which is bigger, like I did here, that is my bigger number. So well done if you identified that this number was greater. Okay, here is something for you to discuss. I want us to, um, we can just ignore um, the speech bubbles at the bottom. And what I want you to do is have a look at these, this number. Here I have the number 13.2. Zero, 03. What I would like you to do is use these digits in any order to create one number which is greater than this and one number which is less than that. So we're just going to ignore this bit for now. At this point, you can pause the video and restart it when you have found one number which is greater than this and one number which is less than this using those digits. Okay, welcome back. So, um, there are 
with my apologies, I dropped my pen. There are numerous ways that we could do this. There is no one correct way, but what we need to do is create a number which is bigger. So if you firstly just said, well, I'm going to put a bigger number than one in this tens column, that would be a really logical thing to do. So once I put a three in here, once I put the three in there, I can really arrange the other numbers in any order that I like. Because this number now, 32.013, is much bigger than 13.203. So there are many different ways that you could have organized those numbers. Now, uh, let's try and find a number which is less than the number which I have written on the board. So the first thing that you might have been tempted to do is go, okay, well, I've got a one here, so I'm going to put a zero there. So let's just try that out. Zero, let's say 0 0.3.213. Now, this answer is sort of half right and half not right. The reason it is right is because, yes, I have organised the numbers in such a way where the tens are less here, so that was correct. But when I'm writing numbers out, if I'm writing the number three, do I usually write it like this? Sometimes we might see that with a date or a time or something like that, but more often than not, we don't put a zero in the tens column unless there are other things up here in the hundreds or the thousands column. So it's not wrong if you did that, but it would be better if we had an answer like this. We identified that okay, I'm going to have to put a one here. So I've used the one. Now I need a number which is less than three. So which of those could I use? Well, let's use the two. And then I could have a zero, three, three. And there you can see I have created a number, 12.033, which is less than 13.203, my number at the top. Okay, let's have a look at these two numbers then. So, um, which of these do you think is the biggest number? Is it 78.061 or is it 81.4? Well, well done if you were able to identify that. It is in fact the bottom number, 81.4. Now, remember, just like we talked about at the beginning, yes, this number here, does have many more digits in it. But when identifying what the numbers are and which one is bigger, I just have to start reading from left to right. So I've organized my numbers, so all the tens are in the same column, the ones are in the same column, the tenths, the hundredths, and the thousandths. And then I need to start reading from left to right. So for example, what I need to do is start with this column. I have seven tens in this column, and I have eight tens in this column. Those numbers are not equal to each other. Which one is the bigger number? Well, well done, of course, if you are able to identify that this is the bigger number. Once I know that number is bigger, I'm done. I don't even have to pay any attention to the rest of the numbers because there's no digits in here that could make seven tens bigger than eight tens. Okay, your independent task for this lesson. Thank you for bearing with me while I opened that up. What you need to do is have a read of the questions and then identify the correct answer. So let's have a go at all of them. Uh, first, the maths uh, this week is largely going to be split into three challenges. Please attempt all the challenges. It's not like in school where you pick your favourite one and do 15 questions of it. I've made the challenges quite small and I want you to progress through all of them, please. Please have a go at all of them. So... For the first question, you are identifying the larger of the pair of numbers. What it might help you to do at this stage is write uh, the two numbers out in place value grids. So you might want to write 
you might want to write 1.7 and 7.0 out, just like we had done with these numbers, put them into the place value uh, charts or draw a place value chart out, or you might be able to just identify it yourself. So for the first one, each of the answers, you're writing the larger number in the answers there. For challenge two, what you are doing is writing out the numbers from smallest to largest. Please separate the numbers with a comma, just like I have done in the question. So what you might want to do is write all the numbers out again in a place value chart. So there's three numbers, so you'd have to write an extra box at the bottom. Write them out and then identify which is the biggest and then the second biggest and then the third biggest by working from left to right in terms of your place value. And last but not least is challenge three. And you are doing exactly the same thing again, but you are organising these numbers and they are to three decimal places this time rather than to two decimal places. I hope that all makes sense. Obviously, let us know on the class stream or by sending us a private message. If you are unsure, of course, you can talk to your peers or you can talk directly to us. And please enjoy this task. Over to you.